All right, guys. So I got. Should be able to do this in one video. Um, it's about taking up your cross. What does it mean to take up your cross? I've actually been looking at this for a couple of days now. I meant to do the video yesterday or day before yesterday, but other stuff kept getting put in the way that was more pertinent to cover. Uh, so I figured now, since this is going to be a day of prayer, and these will be uploaded later on tonight, um, I could cover it. And um, But what is taking up your cross? Because we see that in the Bible. Um, in Matthew 10, 38, it says, And whoever does not take up his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. But what does that mean to take up your cross? Now, a lot of people say, well, you need to bear your sins. No, it's not what it is. A lot of people say, well, you need to get a pair of sandals, wear a robe, have a staff, and have one coat, and go and preach the gospel to all the world. No, that's not it either. Um, I've had people actually on YouTube tell me that. It's like, well, then why haven't you done it? Because you're on a computer right now. People get weird ideas about this stuff. And, it, and one the one reason is a lot of pride is involved in it. Another reason is the lack of understanding. They don't rightly divide the word. They don't look at it in context of what it's saying. Much of what Jesus said, much of what God said, much of what is explained in the Bible is symbolism to something else. A symbolism that that pertains to real life. <coughs> and he made it that way so it would be relatable. So we would understand what it's talking about. A lot of the things in the Bible, we have to go and look at what was going on back then to understand exactly what he's talking about. Then it makes perfect sense. And we're able to relate it to things. It was all done that way for a reason. So what is it to take up your cross? In Mark 8.34, I want to go through some scripture and we'll see. Um, and you're going to see it's going to evolve something else. Mark 8.34, and calling the crowd to him with his disciples, he said to them, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Well, what does he mean by denying himself? Now, a lot of people have put a lot of stock in a very, very, very simplistic understanding of this. And they have gone out, sold everything they have, gave it all away, and went in sandals and a robe and went out in the street. And they're living homeless. Um, I met one guy that had done that down at Corpus years ago when I was a teenager. And he thought that's what he had to do. Now, it may have been the Holy Spirit put it on his heart to do that and go to preach to people in the homeless. But that is not the requirement. The requirement of denying yourself is deny yourself the lusts of the flesh. Deny yourself the worldly things. And that doesn't mean giving away stuff. If you've got a family, you got to you have to provide for your family. He doesn't expect you to walk away from all that. And it also means to put Christ first. The first thing I do every day is I put up a, a video. A prayer. Here, it's been morning prayer here lately. That's my, that's my ritual now. As soon as I get up, I come in here, sit down, do the morning prayer video before I do anything else. And when other stuff pops up, and unless I'm gone, if I'm here, when something comes up, I, I get on here and do a video. That's first in my life. Christ is first in my life. That's my cross. I'm denying myself the lusts of the flesh. I'm denying myself the things that I used to do all the time. The alcohol, uh, the pornography, the cursing. Uh, hating other people, all that, all, being judgmental, all those things that I know aren't godly, I'm denying those things. I'm fasting today for our brothers and sisters. I deny myself foods. Um, any things like that that I feel like I need to get out of my life, I deny those things. That's I'm taking up my cross. That's the cross I'm bearing. And it's different for every single person. In Mark 835, it says, for whoever would save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake and the gospels will save it. Well, is he talking about your your you, your life life? Because um, Peter denied Christ three times so he wouldn't get caught up in his crucifixion. So he saved his own life. But wait a minute, that doesn't jive with what's going on here because that was an apostle. And he was still blessed and anointed. So what is he talking about here? This is reading this stuff in context. This is rightly dividing it. What is he talking about? For whoever would save his life will lose it. For whoever doesn't, 
whoever lives for the world is going to lose all that stuff. Because when you die, you can't take it with you. And in the tribulation, it's all going to get taken away. But whoever loses his life for my sake in the Gospels will save it. In, a, in any situation that you come across where it, you, you're forced to make a choice, do the right thing, follow Christ, or do the wrong thing, follow the world. That's what he's talking about. You have to now make a choice. Do I want to go after Christ and stick with the things that are Christ, or am I going to go, go after the world? You deny that. If, if that. And sometimes that decision will cause you to suffer when you choose Christ first. That's what he's talking about, losing and saving your life. Because anybody can, <coughs> in a, say, a business deal, and anybody can go the way that will be easier and go the way that will make them the most money. But doing the wrong thing, doing it on the backs of other people, you make the decision based on what Christ would want you to do, and you do the right thing. Now, it could cause you pain. It could cause you suffering. It could cause you hurt. It could cause you to lose a lot. But that's okay because you'll, you're going to get it on the other end. There's a time of refreshing and redemption coming. There's a time of restoration coming. It's all about who you're living for. Are you living for Christ or are you living for the world? That's taking up your cross. It also is based on something else. We're going to get to it here in a second. Luke 9, 23. And he said to all, if any would, would, anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Galatians 5, 24. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Now you're starting to see. He's starting to explain it. If you're going to follow after Christ, you're crucifying the flesh. You're doing away with those lusts, those things that you enjoy, those things that you know aren't... I, I don't hardly, hardly ever watch movies anymore because so much of it is witchcraft and evil and demonic and all that kind of stuff. I do away with it. Um, I've cut a lot of stuff out of my life, come to think of it. I'm more focused now on what the Lord wants me to do for my brothers and sisters. I'm more focused on that than I am my life now. This has become my life. That's turning away from those things. That's denying yourself. So again, Galatians 5.24, And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. We're trying to do away with those things. And a lot of it is internal. A lot of it. Galatians 2.20, I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Uh, Matthew 16.24, then Jesus told his disciples, If anyone would come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hebrews 13, 1 through 25, let brotherly love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for thereby some have entertained angels unawares. Remember those who are in prison as though in prison with them, and those who are mistreated, since you also are in the body. Do you notice he said, remember those who are in prison? A lot of people think that, that they must go visit people in prison, and they a lot of them end up very disappointed in how it turns out for them. Remember those in prison. Keep them in thought. Keep them in mind. A lot of this stuff is internal. A lot of it's spiritual. Um, since you are also are in one body. So when our brothers and sisters on the East Coast are suffering through Dorian, we will be suffering too. In the spirit, we endure that stuff. You ever wonder why whenever you hear about some, or you get depressed and you're struggling you know, emotionally, and then you hear about some bad stuff happening to Christians somewhere? That's the Holy Spirit telling you, hey, brothers and sisters are hurting. A lot of stuff that goes on, goes on internally, and we're not even aware that it happens. Uh, our spirit makes prayers. We're not even aware these prayers are going on. You'll find out when we stand before Christ. Let marriage be held in honor among all, and let the marriage bed be undefiled. For God will judge the sexually immoral and adulterous. Keep your life free from love of money, and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. This is the things of crucifying the flesh, denying its lusts and desires. That's what he's talking about. There are certain things that we, there are certain things we have to do. You can have money, but not love money. I don't. I have no concern for my money. 
God has blessed me greatly. He's given me a, a medical retirement. I suffer for it, but I live very comfortably. I don't have to worry about anything. My bills are being paid. I'm getting out of debt. I have plenty. He has really blessed me big time. And, but that money, I, I, that's not my focus. I'm not worried about that. It, I let, let the Lord take care of that. That takes care of itself. I work with what I have. I've, I still have to work with money, but I don't love it. I don't have a desire to go and chase after more of it. A lot of people do. That's their sole focus. That's just one of the things we have to stay away from. Um, the sexually immoral thing. You, you know what that entails. Matthew 11, 28 through 30. Come to me all who labor and are heavy laden and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am gentle and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. When you follow after Christ and don't follow after the world, so much stress comes off of you. Bearing your cross is actually better for you than going after the world. Be quiet. So... Here's Acts 2.42. And they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and the fellowship, to the breaking of bread and the prayers. A lot of people, that, that's just their ministry. They're, that's their cross that they're bearing to do that. A lot of people are prayer warriors. I've become a watchman. That's my cross that I'm bearing. That's my service for the kingdom. But in all of these things, what is all this stuff referring to? What is it being likened to? It's doing the right thing, right? We know that there's wrong things that we can do that'll be okay, but we do the right thing. I convicted myself a couple of years ago about not speeding anymore. When I'm on the road, cruise control. I don't do but maybe sometimes one or two miles above the speed limit. That's it. I set the cruise and that's where it stays. I don't go racing around and, and flying down the road. You know, And if traffic gets mad, they get mad. But I'm doing the right thing. And... That is bearing your cross. It's denying your desire to do the wrong thing and do the right thing. Stay focused on what's right. If this all leads up to justice and doing the right thing. What is justice? What is the right thing to do? This is also bearing your cross. This is a lot of times in the act of doing the right thing, you cause yourself a lot of problems. But you know on the other side, it's going to work out better for you. You may suffer here a little bit because of it, but on the other side, it's going to be far greater for you. Uh, okay, so in Proverbs 21, 15, when justice is done, it is a joy to the righteous, but terror to evildoers. When we stand with Christ, we stand tall. We stand with authority. And not authority as we're bold, or, I mean, um, arrogant or, or in control or anything like that. People see you and they know what's going on. Kids will look at you and they know what's going on. Kids, when I'm around other people's kids, they can't keep their eyes off of me. They want to be around me and with me because of what's in here. <coughs> and because of Christ. I've always had a great rapport with kids. Um, kids remember my name before they remember anybody else's. My little nephew, I can't go anywhere without him tagging along with me and being right there with me. Because of what's inside of me. Because I stick with truth and with justice. And I have that authority. Not authority as in I'm over somebody as authority as in control. But authority of Christ being inside of me. And the people who are right know this stuff. Amos 5.24. I can look at somebody and tell whether they have Christ in them or not. Amos 5.24. But let justice roll down like waters and righteousness like an ever flowing stream. Romans 12, 19, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. That's another part of justice. That's another, another part of taking up your cross. Not returning evil for evil. Somebody does you wrong, just let it go. Let the Lord deal with it. That's part of taking up your cross. Isaiah 1, 17, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. Plead the widow's cause. It's still, it's relating back to taking up the cross. Doing the right thing. Isaiah 30, 18. Therefore, the Lord waits to be gracious to you 
and therefore he exalts himself to show mercy to you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. When you put it all in his hands and put all your faith in him, everything else you do works out for your betterment. Now, people have asked me before that, uh, so what does it mean that, that all things work for the good of those uh, he loves, but they see a lot of trouble in their lives? Just because to you it looks like it's trouble doesn't mean that on the other end of it, it's not going to come out for your betterment. Um, I got somebody right now that's worried, struggling about their mom and sister. Uh, I haven't had a chance to talk to him recently because I've been running so much, but he's worried about their salvation. I told him, I said, just you planted the seeds, step back and let the Lord deal with it. And he, he struggles with that. It, it bothers him because he wants them to be saved. I, was like, I told him, sometimes you have to step back and just let God work. Because if you're always up there in the front in the way, he's going to pull back and go, okay. Sometimes you just got to let him do the work. Don't focus on that. Don't worry about that. Focus on your salvation. Let God worry about their salvation. And uh, it's hard. It's a struggle. But when you start to look past these things and go, I know what's going to happen on the other end. I'm okay with this. Your worries go away. Your doubt goes away. And you don't struggle as much. Um. Micah 6, 8, he has told you, O man, what is good? And what does the Lord require of you but to do justice and to love kindness and to walk humbly with your God? Simple, but that's taking up your cross. Because when you do these things, when you take up your cross and you walk before the world, you will be at odds with the world. Now, there's people who are going to honor the way you are and honor how you're living your life and honor what you're doing. Um, but for the most part, most people will not like you. I, I've got maybe two or three friends. Because that's, when you separate from the world, there's a division. And you're not part of that anymore. <coughs> and if you're you're walking right, if you're trying to you know do the right thing, you're going to see it. And it'll get you in a lot of trouble. But it is what it is. I, I've, I can't even tell you all the times that I've gone through things that, because I wanted to do the right thing. A lot of people got mad at me for it. But I knew that I'm not looking for their approval. I'm looking for God's approval. That's bearing your cross. Um, Isaiah 61, 8. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrong. I will faithfully give them their recompense. And I will make an everlasting covenant with them. He just wants you to walk right. Just do the right thing. How do you do that? Learn Learn about him. It's all in the Bible. Learn about what he would like you to do, to do the right thing. Now, that's not for your salvation, but as the Holy Spirit indwells in you and changes you, that should be your natural inclination to go towards those things. That's bearing your cross. Psalm 37, 27 through 29. Turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever. For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. This is the separation between us as children of God and the world. We turn away from those things that the world would rather us do. Uh, and it can be something as simple as you go to McDonald's, you pay, you get your change back, and you pull down and park and give everybody their food in the car and eat in the car. And you count through your changes like, whoa, wait a minute, they gave me like $20 too much change back. Now you have a decision, a moral decision to make. Most people roll on with it. Oh, they, they, they got it covered. Some people go back inside. I say most and some because that's how it is. Some people take that change back and say, oh, hey, you guys gave me too much change. Here's the receipt and here's the change you gave me. And you give them that money back. I know from personal experience that when that, that happens, at the end of the night, when they count their drawer, it comes up short, and they have to pay that money back into that drawer. That can hurt somebody's paycheck. That can hurt somebody paying their bills, especially if it's someplace where they don't make a lot of money. Even if it's a dollar, I take it back in. I go back in there, hey, you gave me a dollar too much change, and I give it back to them. I've done it for 85 cents, 65 cents, 15 cents. They were like, oh, you didn't have to bring that back in. 
yeah, but I've done this job and I know how it is when your drawer comes short and 15 cents can mean a lot. And I leave it there and I walk out with it because that's the right thing to do. People will look at you weird for doing that. Um, I turned a car around one time and went back and gave change back. So it's all about decisions. You just smell of burning wood all of a sudden. Hope nobody's got a fire going outside. This is dry here in Texas. So it's all about doing the right thing. It's all about making the decision to walk after Christ. And that is when you have that decision of, well, I can do the wrong thing and it'll be easier, but I can do the right thing and it'll be harder, but I know this is the right thing to do. That's bearing your cross. It's all about justice. It's all about doing the right thing. Psalm 106.3, Blessed are those who, deserve, who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. These also count as good works. When you do the right thing, you know, it's, it can be very simple stuff. Proverbs 24, 24 through 25. Whoever says to the wicked, you are in the right, will be cursed by peoples, abhorred by nations. But those who rebuke the wicked will have delight and a good blessing will come upon them. Do the right thing. And rebuke doesn't have to be something nasty. You can just be like, hey, what you're doing is wrong. You need to, you need to stop. That, that's a rebuke. It's very simple. Zechariah 7, 9, thus says the Lord of hosts, render true judgments. Show kindness and mercy to one another. Oh, here we go. Ecclesiastes 3, 17. I said in my heart, God will judge the righteous and the wicked. For there is a time for every matter and for every work. Take up your cross. If you're following Christ, take up your cross. Take up your cross to do the right thing according to everyone. Take up your cross to get rid of the things in your life that you know he's not happy with, that you know he doesn't appreciate. If you love him, you should naturally want to do these things. It should be your desire to do those things. Um, it's hard. I'm not even, not even going to sugarcoat. That it's something easy to do. It's not. It's a hard thing to do. <clears throat> hard thing to do because this is how our world is nowadays. Even two thousand years ago, it was that way. The the money was everything because people wanted to have a good life. And what they didn't realize is it's not money and stuff that makes a good life. It's you having faith, and He gives you a good life. Not money or stuff. Being comfortable, not having to worry about anything, not struggling. You know, on the outside, people will look, you know, I deal with migraines. I deal with you know health issues and struggles. I can't handle the heat anymore. People look at that and go, wow, this guy's really suffering. I wonder if he's really right with God. But they do that based on a lack of understanding. That's not what that's talking about. That's talking about if you want to be blessed by God and stuff doesn't matter anyway, it's all about salvation. The blessings will bless you in the key areas where you need the blessing. I know people that are in debt that, that, they're doing great. They're doing fantastic. They're doing five times better than me, but they're in so much debt. I'm about to pay my debt off, all of it. And it kind of shows, you know, God's blessing me. He's given me a ministry. My ministry is prospering. I'm blessing people. I'm reaching people. That's awesome. I have more people on my YouTube channel ministry than my church does in their church. I think we've, we've, we've barely broken 50 People in our congregation, maybe once or twice, maybe three times. But that's how it is. And it all comes down to where are you going and what are you choosing? Are you choosing the right thing, choosing the wrong thing? Now, I still make wrong decisions on little stuff, things that I should make a, a different decision on, a better decision on. But I'm going the right way. I'm headed the right direction. And that's all he expects. Put the effort in. Try. Take up that cross and deny yourself and go forward. And just when you put your full faith and trust in him and put it all on his shoulders, watch what he does for you. Watch how he changes you. Seek justice. Do the right thing. Do the right thing concerning yourself and concerning other people and concerning God. I love you guys. I bless you guys in Jesus name. Stay safe out there. Things are going crazy. Things are falling apart. People are losing their minds. But in Christ, we know no matter what happens to us, we 
are saved. And we, he will see us through that. And when we stand before him, it will be a great and amazing day. I will see you guys in the next video.